Even though rock and roll is rooted in the music of black America, the groups who have dominated rock from the beginning have been all white. The Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Who. Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band is the first supergroup playing to mostly white audiences to have a permanent black member, Clarence Clemens on sax. And after 14 years, 2,000 concerts, and 10 albums, Clemens has become much more than just a member of the band. Do I have to say those words? Do I have to say his name? It's Majesty Clarence Big Man Clemens on the saxophone. In 1973, Clarence Clemens left his wife, two kids, and a well-paying job as a social worker to earn $15 a week on the road with an unknown guitar player named Bruce Springsteen. Springsteen has said he knew this was the guy he'd been looking for his whole life, and he knew it the very first night they met. Now, what's the real story? How did you meet him? Well, it was a terrible night. I mean, really bad. I go to this bar, open the door, and a big gust of wind blows the door, literally, blows the door right down the street. Right? Now you're making this stuff up I'm, now, No, no, you? honest to God. I walk in the place, and there's this guy standing here. I said, hey, I want to sit in with you. He said, sure. You know, like, this guy just tear the door off the place, you know. Sure, you can do anything you want, you know. <laughs> you looked a little scary, I bet. Yeah, you. I was, I guess I did, you know. I guess I did scary, but the magic started, man. It was like all those things I had ever dreamed all those things that are happening right now to me, I saw that night. Springsteen nicknamed his new saxophone player the big man, and not just because he's 6'4", 250 pounds. I was the enforcer in the early days, you know? When the, the promoter would say, you got 15 minutes to be off stage and we're pulling the plug. And because of my football attitude, you know, <laughs> I said to, to let them know in a nice way that they weren't gonna pull the plug on us. You can still find Clemens walking into small clubs. But when he takes to the stage now, club owners let him have all the time he wants. You know, there is this big man thing, a guy who walks out of the mist and transforms your music. Dave Marsh was a reporter for Rolling Stone magazine when he first saw Clemens and Springsteen in 73, and he's been writing about them ever since. There's a certain mythic Americanness about about the, those two. They're like Huck and Jim and the stage is the raft. It's the mythology of racial integration in this country is so tremendously powerful that even when it's relatively unspoken or completely unspoken the way it is in that show, it still evokes a tremendous response. You were obviously attracted by Springsteen's music right from the beginning. Why aren't there more black faces at the Springsteen concerts? Well, I guess that has to do with uh, the industry. The record industry is a very racist industry. You know, uh, being in the band, you know, you see very few black people in the shows, you know, and, and I look for it, you know. But he's not being marketed that way, and so very few black people get a chance to hear him. What about the music? Wouldn't that seem to be a universal if attraction. If the radio doesn't play it, then they don't know it, you know? And, and black people listen to black stations, I guess. And the black stations don't play a and lot the black of Springsteen? Stations don't play black, Bruce Springsteen. Wait, you mean, are you telling because, me that more blacks don't go to Springsteen concerts because Bruce Springsteen is merchandised he as is a white merchandised star? As a white rock and roll star, yes. You know? I mean, uh, I don't know whether it's the white program directors who are doing it or the black program directors who say they don't want it. I could walk down the street in a black community and nobody knows who I am. Hmm. You know, but I can go down the street in West Palm Beach and everybody stops me for an hour right today. We saw that, right? Yeah, that's very to, strange. You know, isn't it? Black people are not necessarily all that comfortable around white people even yet. And in black people's minds to a certain extent, who's Bruce Springsteen to talk about the suffering of the working class? We know about that. And it's often very difficult to communicate to people the idea that both black and white workers are in the same boat somewhere. 